please applaud with a warm welcome from the LMU Munich, Jan Ullmann. Okay, before I talk about what this weird um, topic is going to be about, I'd like you to show a hand. Hopefully I can see you. Who thinks their educational system is perfect? Show a hand. See? I kind of agree. So I'm Jan, and I've been wondering about education for 30 years, actually, how we can improve education. I've been wondering that in kindergarten, in preschool, uh, in elementary school, I wondered about that. How can we improve education in high school in Germany and the US? Uh, when I got a teaching degree, when I did my PhD in education, and I'm working as an e-learning coach right now. And uh, I always wondered, what is it that we can do to improve education? And to do that, I read hundreds of studies. For example, this one, 250 pieces on influences for student achievement. How can we make education better? Or maybe technology is going to change education for Forever. or iPads, I thought for some time, is going to improve classroom learning. And there were studies on that. And then there were 10 disruptions that would revolutionize education. But actually, <laughs> it hasn't. So there must be something wrong. Maybe we're doing something wrong here. I think what we're doing wrong here is we're perfecting the means while confusing the aims. Actually, Otto Schopenhauer said that he was pretty pissed about that as well. Uh, <laughs> we don't know where we're going but we're perfecting the way that this is the big problem. And my thesis now is, what if being human were the goal of education? What about that? Um, actually, how do I define being human? I define being human as being a child. Do you remember what it felt like when you were a child? Every day was better than the last. Everything was colorful. Everything was playful. This is what being human actually is. Because when you were born, there was absolutely nothing wrong with you. <laughs> You were 100% all right. Everything was absolutely fine. But then something happened. And you might, uh, might have been there too. Then something happened. Someone told you, you can't. Someone told you, you're not good enough. Someone told you, you have to do it this way. And this is just how things are. And you started believing that. So basically, being human to me is being conscious. Actually, words are really not sufficient to describe what I really mean here. It's being aware. It's being mindful. It's being awake. Uh, it's being present. It's being content. This is why we do meditation. So if you've ever been in a state of flow when you worked on something and you forgot about space and time, you were being yourself. And this is within you all the time. This is like the blue sky. But you know what happened to the blue sky? Clouds came up saying, you can't saying you aren't, saying you have to do this way, saying this is just the way it is, or maybe things like, just shut up and do your homework. <laughs> so, um, what does being human lead to, in my opinion? It leads to a tremendous, unlimited creativity. It leads to being curious. Every child is born naturally curious. Um, this just leads to being critical. You just ask questions. Children ask questions all the time. That's why I think they're being human, actually. But then over time, something happened, and it's called education. So um, my question to you now is, do you see any difference between do those two pictures? A chicken farm and a lecture hall. <laughs> I really don't think, and I'm not being sarcastic here, there's any difference because... The chicken farmer, he doesn't give a shit about the chicken. And who invented this system? They don't care about humans at all. And this is what I really believe. So what can we do now? What if, or actually, what would the, the people that invented this system here, what would they have called this talk here, if they were giving this talk right now? They would have probably said something like, what if being a worker was the goal of education? Or what if being obedient were the goal of education? Or what if actually, if you're going to be really sarcastic, what if being a slave were the goal of education? Because this is what the system, I think, is aiming at. So seriously now, what if being human were the goal uh, of education? I think just like you don't have to tell a plant how to grow. It just needs a bit of sun. It needs a bit of water. Um, humans know how to learn and grow. They just need a bit of care. They need a little bit of support. They know how to do this. So grow and let grow. And there's nothing else actually that we have to do. So part one, creativity. Sir Ken Robinson said, we don't grow into creativity, we grow out of it. Or actually, we're educated out of it. That means we're all born creative, but school kind of kicks it out of us. It tells us we're wrong, and then we're not creative anymore. Same goes for curiosity. Do you remember how you learned your mother tongue to perfection? It looked like this. It just needed a bit of time, patience, and then you were there. 
but this is how we teach languages in school. So I don't think this is really how this works. This is not a human way of learning a language, starting with grammar and past and whatever, all this kind of stuff. So basically we're just told to shut up and learn, and uh, I think this is not really a human way of doing it. So, what are curiosity killers in my opinion? I think there are things like grades, there are things like standardization, there are things like curricula, and of course teachers telling you you can't. You might have all been there, and there are not all teachers are like this. There are some teachers that know that it's important to maintain that inborn curiosity and have you just stay at that level or get you back there. Same goes for critical thinking. Who do you think the knowledge monopoly belongs to in the classroom? Is it this guy? It used to be this guy, but now it's this guy. This is the knowledge monopoly in the classroom right now, but Einstein already knew that learning is, is, is experience and everything else is just information. That means on Google, you only get data, you get information, but you're not gonna get ideas, you're not gonna learn, you're not gonna have experiences. And also, Critical thinking will prevent us from a guy like this in the future. So I think it's really important. So, great, Jan. And now? Well, usually what happens now, there's the big net coming up. And I'm not talking about network, I'm not talking about the internet, I'm talking about things like Gitnet, Gipsnet, Machmanet. And for all the Russian speaking people in here, it's like the Nyetnet. Um, so. Yeah, this is usually what happens now. Oh, we can't do that, we can't change things. And I believe the only thing we have to do is understand that the beliefs someone put into our heads about ourselves and about the education systems, they're not real. The only thing that's real is ourselves. We're already there, we're already content right now as we're all sitting here. So you can become human again by questioning those beliefs someone's put into your, he into your head about you, that you can't do something, that you need something, you don't. And then you can take action and the rest will naturally follow. I promise you, everything will just follow under those um, goals about being a human in education. So this is actually what I did in my PhD as well. I started with the goals of being human and then everything else followed. So it was not about digital education. It was not about e-learning and all this kinds of stuff. I started um, by being human goals. And then these three explainer videos for English learning came out of it. And then we had a design, there was a flipped classroom. That means I showed the videos beforehand. Um, so it was more effective to them. I put in uh, problem-solving skill-based tasks. I let them be creative as possible. I tried to be creative. I put in real-life tasks in my PhD with some real students too, and I was only the guide. I wasn't a knowledge monopoly because I am just not. So you might ask, what can I do now? I think if you're a researcher, I'm asking you to create. Under these assumptions I made tonight, uh, I want you to create stuff that will lead to better education. If you're a teacher, I'm asking you to be stubborn. I'm asking you to follow your heart because if you're a real teacher, in your heart you know this educational system is not the way it should be and we can change things today if we really want to. And if you're a normal person, like everyone else, you can share your knowledge, you can share your skills. Everyone knows something and the internet is a great platform to share this. Or just like Steve Jobs put it, everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. So don't just live a life, build one. Do you want to be the miserable adult person that was told that they're not good enough? Or do, do you want to reactivate the inner child inside of you and connect and make this world a better place? Thank you very much. And now question me too, please.